Chapter 28, The Picture, 1942 That Fra Adamek tramples about like an elephant, Father commented. You wouldn't think people could make that much noise. Mother didn't look up from her knitting. She just nodded. So Father took up his newspaper once more. He looked at the clock and said, They'll be here in an hour. The three small suitcases with their most important things in them stood ready by the door. Our coats lay on a chair. Don't you want to lie down from a bit before then? asked Mother. No, Father said. I'll snooze later in the air raid shelter. Everything grew quiet again. All one could hear was the ticking of the clock. I read my book. Suddenly, I heard a tiny noise outside. I listened, but no one seemed, no one but me seemed to have heard anything. There it was again, a gentle knocking. This time, Father heard it as well. He looked up from his newspaper. Someone knocked on our door, I said. We held our breath and listened. And there, it came once more, a faint knock, so faint you could barely hear it. But that's Friedrich's signal, I exclaimed and jumped up. Quiet, stay where you are, ordered Father, pushing me back into my chair. Mother will go. Mother went, not making a sound. When she returned, Friedrich was with her. Friedrich had turned up the collar of his coat. His coat was stiff with dirt. Furtively, he came to the table and shook hands with Father and me. His hand wasn't clean, either. Anxiously, he examined our faces in the room. Then he whispered, I won't stay long. First of all, you'll sit down, Father decided. But Friedrich resisted. He didn't even want to take off his coat. When he finally did, we could see that his jacket and trousers were encrusted with dirt. Friedrich jumped every time Mother left the room. Father said nothing. Only his eyes were encouraging Friedrich to talk. It took a long time before Friedrich finally began to talk. Haltingly, I have a hiding place, but I won't tell you where, he added at once. You don't have to, Father said. It's terrible, so lonely. I can only think of how it was, but I've forgotten so much. I can't even remember what Mother and Father really looked like. There's nothing to remember them by. Had to sell the watch. This is all I have left. And from his jacket pocket, he pulled the cap to the fountain pen, Herr Newdorf, our teacher, had given him for his 13th birthday. His name was still legible on it. I no longer have the other part, Friedrich explained. It may have fallen out of my pocket. Tenderly, he stroked the cap. Then Mother quietly opened the door. He jumped again. Mother put a large, thick sandwich in front of him. She stood and waited until he bit greedily into it. Then she went back into the kitchen. Friedrich wolfed down the sandwich, forgetting even to say thank you. He concentrated on eating. After he had swallowed the last bite almost without chewing, he picked the crumbs off his plate. Mother gave him two more sandwiches, which went as quickly as the first. Only then did Friedrich continue. I need a picture of mother and father, he said. I only came because I know you have one. You know, the snapshot on the horse? I know you have it. Please, may I have it? Father thought. It can only be in that large box, mother said, and walked to the closet. She pulled out the giant chocolate box. Father had given her chocolates for their 10th wedding anniversary because he'd found work again shortly after. Mother opened the box and the topmost photos slid out. I'll look through them quietly. Quickly, Father said, putting aside one picture after the other. And you come with me till they find it, Mother said to Friedrich. She had run a hot bathroom and put some of my clean clothes in the bathroom. At first, Friedrich refused, but then he went after all. The box contained many hundreds of pictures, photos, picture postcards, birthday cards. Father and I searched together, but we had barely sorted through half when the sirens began to wail. Looking troubled, Friedrich dashed out of the bathroom. What shall I do now? He asked, horrified. Get dressed for a start, said Father. Friedrich obediently buttoned the fresh shirt and combed his hair with shaking hands. We'll take him to the shelter with us, Mother said. Impossible, said Father. Rush will put us in jail. But we can't put him out on the street at a time like this, Mother put in. Just look at the boy. The best thing for him to do is stay right here in the apartment, Father decided. Nothing will happen. I'm sure. And he can wait here until the air raid is over. Then we'll look further for the photo. Friedrich accepted the decision without a word. But be sure not to put on any light, Father reminded him. Then we took our suitcases and went out to the air raid shelter. Friedrich looked at it after us fearfully. Anti-aircraft guns already thundered outside. Searchlights swayed across the sky. Planes hummed. Shrapnel spattered. Suddenly, two flares lit up the sky, looking like Christmas trees.